Uh, hi, I'm uh, Chris Marwan, and I am originally from Redditch, and um, I'm really good friends with Prit Pal Kelsey. We've known each other since we were kids. Um, we always used to have uh, drawing competitions with each other, uh, graffiti with each other, um, just hanging out with each other, both in, into the same things, drawing and hip hop and music and art, just general popular culture. I was, yeah. Um, my first job actually was in Digbeth. Um, it was when the internet was actually first starting, kicking off, and I was lucky enough to get a job, my first real job at an ISP uh, as their in-house designer. So not just uh, illustration and design, I was, I was learning uh, Flash and Dreamweaver and how to build web pages. But yeah, the, the studio was actually based in Digbeth, which was, um, which was great because I got to see Digbeth being, oh, it was changing actually, it's when all the building was happening um, and just hanging around that area and around Birmingham in general. When we're talking about Digbeth changing and, and building, we're not talking about as it is now, we're talking about 1990s yeah. and it actually becoming the beginning of a, a creative space. Yeah, totally. Um, I remember that, what's the bar used to? Medicine bar. Medicine bar, yeah. I used to go club in there at the... Is it uh, Andromeda? Is that if I remember right? Can't remember Andromeda nightclub. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was starting to see like all the coffee bars and bars and the gallery spaces opening up and just that kind of I suppose like that regeneration. So sort of like the youth coming in and doing their thing and a lot of independent kind of like small studio spaces. Um, I actually did some freelance work around there as well for a few. Oh, names of the studio it's totally totally forgot but yeah i had a, f a few of my first few uh freelance gigs doing album covers at a few studios there uh, which was kind of like open open the doors to graphic design um and illustration uh what i do now but yeah digbeth was the first place i kind of got those gigs okay and from digbeth you went to uh is that when you went into london from digbeth? no i did um a, a stint at the isp <laughs> Uh, in Milton Keynes, and then uh, from Milton Keynes, I moved to. I got a job at um, the Attic, which was um, a, a really cool design agency in London. Uh, but it did mean just leaving Milton Keynes and Birmingham behind and moving to London, um, and yeah, getting a place in Tottenham, and just yeah, bussing it and tubing it into the into the studio in London. Uh, it was on Portland Street, actually, so bang right in the center of, uh, the epicenter of London, really. So quite quite uh, an eye-opener and a big learning curve, actually, working for a huge company like that. And we're, we're talking clients like Coke and British Airways and, um, yeah, big brands, which I've never really dealt with before. It's all, always been like kind of smaller uh, independent record labels or small independent companies so yeah very yeah quite like I say quite an eye-opener very very different but uh, brilliant nevertheless um, but also uh, yeah the, the, the attic was amazing and I'd always loved the attic and I collected all their books and knew of the designers at the attic but actually I was only there for I was actually only there for about 12 months because while I was there actually realized I didn't want to be in a big agency uh, and I had friends in smaller agencies and when I used to go along to their places I really loved the vibe and just how, how it was in a smaller independent um, company um, so I decided to yeah I decided to leave uh, the attic and go and work with one of my friends who had a smaller outfit in um, Curtain Road over that way Old Street way um, which was which was amazing, uh, but I was I wasn't actually there that long uh, because it was the recession. Actually, that's what the recession all kicked off, and the job at the attic actually would have gone anyway because the attic closed and my friend's company closed. So I was without a job for a bit, uh, and then I went for there were uh, lots of design agencies around there. So I was just uh, applying at different agencies, and um, Free Zero or a design company. Um, not call that anymore, not there anymore, but they um, they interviewed me and they took me on there and then. The job interview was in the pub 
basically, and then they gave me the job at the end of the night. I don't know if it was just because I proved that I could burn the pints with Ant, uh, my friend, a good friend now. But um, yeah, they offered me the job and I started there. Um, and I was there quite a while. And that changed name, and changed, changed studio, changed place, changed, changed format as a design studio. Uh, we used to do a lot of stuff for record companies, but as time went on, we got bigger clients and the team grew. Um, was this the time you did the James Blunt album cover? Does that come later? No, it comes a bit later, yeah. Okay. That was just through friends who did uh, all the work for James Blunt, friends with James Blunt, and I was lucky enough to jump on board with that job and help with the album cover and uh, the LP and the singles. Uh, quite, quite again, at the time though, James wasn't actually very, very big. Um, so it was a surprise to us all when he did take off and it had all this artwork attached to it, the job, which was great for the portfolio and great for us. That was Bose Collins actually, who I still do a lot of work for now. Yeah. Um, Even throughout that period though, because I remember very early on, you know. I'm glad you remember. Me, me and you <laughs> kept on, me and you kept friends, and we, we stayed friends, and you helped me out a great deal because in the 90s when the internet was still dial-up, mm. you know, I registered, I had a website, and we got, you know, I was already out there videoing things and filming, and this is obviously long before YouTube came along, but, you know, you were... You were experimenting on this and yeah. social media yeah. and doing things, and you did a lot of stuff for me, like creating firstly the original yeah. logos and then the King of the Beats logo. But yeah. You know, with the websites and stuff. Yeah, that was down to that ISP I talked about in Digbeth. We, we, we taught HTML and Flash and Dreamweaver, so I had a good idea. I've always wanted, I've always been like that throughout my career, I suppose, just kind of, I don't know a lot about everything, but I, I know a little about everything. You know enough to get me by and to kind of like contribute or help with a job i know people around me like Prit, your good self you know who are really good at say photography or filming um and 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 programming uh and motion design and 3d i know i know enough to get by but when i need to bring the big guns in i, I do call out and help get people to help me but yeah with with the stuff you're talking about i, I know just enough to kind of make our logo look call on the internet and make it move around and blur and give it a bit of sound uh, and that was through that ISP power net in Birmingham um, where I learned all that stuff so yeah just take a little bit from each job I had really but um, I don't do so much internet well it's not the internet anymore is it it's totally a new I totally a new thing but um don't do so much of that anymore not the web stuff but let's go into then uh, towards then where you are now because I I've seen you now over the years really uh, explore your drawing skills and abilities here. Yeah? <laughs> and you just seem to have found like, uh, you know, over the, it's a good 10 years for sure anyway, you, you, mm. you're doing this, this illustration style and you've basically carved a massive name for yourself. And it's like, I've got an issue of a magazine somewhere here where it's like, you're, you know, top 10 top creatives there's been a few yeah I've, I've been lucky enough to work for some like great design studios as well which is um you know sort of like traveling on there that sort of like tales as such um but yeah yeah when i did go freelance i did make a bit of a name for myself I suppose um just lucky enough to get those kind of juicy jobs and get get in people's line of vision and in front of the right brands in front of the right eyes um and the magazines picked up on it um, yeah, I think it's down to, I think it's a mix, isn't it? It's like hard work and luck, because there's a lot of people out there who are amazing at drawing and just haven't had that break yet. Um, but yeah, yeah, I suppose it's just been, it's, it's, it's my default, my go-to, that style you're talking about. It's what I'm most comfortable with, that kind of drawing. Um, and it's nice that I can pick up work doing that, that kind of, kind of thing. Um, not always done that. I have done lots of graphic design and branding and working for different agencies yeah. and studios but it's nice to kind of have that to fall back on and that has been my bread and butter for the past I don't know, 10 years or so doing that that work uh, and one of the things i think uh, we've spoken about is that you know we're, we're not just talking about ourselves but we're looking at other artists that you know you're introducing me to as well and we're looking at their work and, and this is 
this is an industry where you've constantly got to you gotta keep going you gotta keep going you gotta keep practicing yeah you still got to there's so much still to learn though as well but yeah i do think you can't keep still you do have to keep cracking on keep going keep working just to stay relevant and fresh um but still stick to your own guns as well and your ideals and your way of working and and don't lose kind of focus on that you know just keep going with what you're good at uh it's not for everyone you know you're not going to get every job but there is a i think you know there is a there's a it's a big old world isn't it so there's a market and a place for your for your thing out there somewhere it's just like you say keep working hard and you'll find it and, and just to be clear this is you know when you when you've got that creative mindset yeah it's very difficult to switch off isn't totally it? yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, big time. I know there's a lot of issues as regards that these days, isn't there? Um, about like how it's important to rest and mental health and all that sort of. We never really had that. Um, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I've got any of those issues. I, I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't think it I do. Wasn't, it um, didn't factor into our experience no. in our life, really, and we've just got to do it. Yeah, yeah, just crack on. I don't, yeah. I don't really see it as work anyway. I'm very lucky. You know, I've done, yeah. done, I've done the shit jobs to be honest um, and I realize like as in really crap jobs you know um, so I, 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 I realize how lucky I am doing what I'm doing so I'm very grateful of that every single day when I do that even through the most stressful jobs and times I realize how lucky I am doing what I do get to do what I love and like you say I find it hard to switch off but even in my downtime I'm sketching or messing with new software or just trying to learn something new, just what can aid me in the next job maybe, or I just have fun doing it, I do. So it's not it's not as if it's hard work or anything. Well, it's hard work, that's the wrong thing to say, but it is hard work, but it's not taxing in that kind of way. I just, yeah, love what I do, Yeah. which yeah, you, I, get, I, which I you get. It's pretty clear, you know, through you know, the friendship I have with you is seeing your work and seeing what you come up with and talking your pictures and this is it. The enthusiasm, you know, you're enthusiastic about what you do. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah I think I think that really helps. Yeah. Um, yeah, love love what we do. Can't put it any simpler than that. Um, love picking up a pencil or a whack on pen or mouse or whatever it is and just get some downtime, just experimenting and playing doing the stuff you've been meaning to. i think that's really important as well just keep those passion projects going as well as client work and if you can get the two to kind of that line to merge even better and you know i've been lucky enough to have that in some jobs not every job um but yeah a lot of the jobs i do get it's something i love anyway so yeah i think that comes through i think that really helps what can you tell me about because I, I know some of you work for some very exciting clients yeah and one of the things that we i spoke to we just spoke to mark about i introduced you to mark yeah we were just talking about a lot of like you know we've seen this and again this is something that's been happening for a, a little while is a lot of brands doing collaborations and they're working with you know small groups or individual artists mm. and stuff to kind of rebrand or kind of give a, a a, a, a new look or a new dark, it's sort of it's like a, I don't know, how would you put it into words, but you know, like a, with Nike or the, the train sneaker companies, mm, mm. things that they're doing now, they would never even entertain no, 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, totally. But you was one of the first, you know, I'm not saying you were the first, but you definitely were among the first wave of people to get involved and do these sort of collaborations yeah yeah but i've worked like i said before i've worked for a few agencies uh sm smaller outfits not loads of people yet we were still picking up jobs by nike and Kaha and people like that and we were getting some really pretty big jobs you know uh, the chance to design a pair of trainers or do do a shop refit um or design that t-shirt for diesel or whatever it was you know and there was only a few of us so it's it's on that it is on that level even over classes and eight like classes and agency at the time it's only a few of us doing what doing that kind of work and uh and as time's gone on it you know 
It's a new norm now. It is the new norm. It's Everyone's that, searching to collaborate. It's Everyone. that kind of grassroots thing. They, they, the big brands really like that grassroots. I suppose TikTok and YouTube and things like that really help because it's just like opening the door into someone's personal own life. You know, the space is small now, isn't it? And they, yeah. they can do everything through a phone and um, it's just more personal on that level, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which the demographic and the client will relate with. Um, and that does, like you say, seem like the new norm. And yeah, lucky enough to kind of, when that was really happening, to be there on the forefront of it with a few others. Um, but it's great. It just means there's opportunity there for everybody. Um, if you've got a strong enough voice, it will come through, you know, and those brands will pick up on you and you get the chance to work with them, which is a dream, so. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, um, what we're talking about, say, where are we going to go from now, but you carving your path and uh, illustrator now, I mean, you, you've been involved in things that we dreamt of as a child. Yeah, like yeah. Being involved in a comic book. Yeah. Being involved with those movies that, you know, like Star Wars or things like that. They, those are dreams, you know. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you think we were around for the first wave, the original Star Wars film, thinking <laughs> that's the end of it. There's never going to be a legacy or there's, it's not going to continue. But we held on to those films dearly. We grew up on comic books. We were very interested in that sort of thing. And I think for people like me and you who are into drawing and illustration, it was a dream to be involved in like comics. Yeah, yeah, You've yeah. Been involved with pretty much every brand, like those... Marvel, yeah. DCs, yeah. Disney, all those people, yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. Lot. I've been, yeah, yeah, it's uh, pinched myself sometimes. I've recently done a load of t shirts for uh, a company called Radio Velvet, actually, and they hold a licensee with Star Wars. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it was basically all about me doing the artwork with, with Lucasfilm and Star Wars, uh, The Mandalorian, Boba Fett and um, Dark Vader, you know, if you would have told 12 year old me, I'd be doing that stuff when I'm older and actually it's legit and official and out there and you can buy it in a shop. Uh, I wouldn't have believed myself. Uh, but no, I have been lucky enough to, to do that work and other work, uh, unfortunately a lot as, as work and work going on now and work in the past, you, you can't talk about everything. You, you know, NDAs and I'd get in trouble, but I have, yeah, I have worked on some for those people you've mentioned, like Disney and Marvel and stuff, and it's it's been amazing. He's, you've probably forgotten the amount of work that you've done for these jobs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Done that many of them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> sketch after sketch after sketch, and yeah, piece after piece. Um, sometimes it doesn't even get shown, but it don't matter. It's just the opportunity and a chance to even step into that universe. Be invited into that universe. Exactly, because it's seen your work. You know? Yeah. Nobody just just walks. No, exactly. You can, and there's nothing wrong with fan art because I do loads of fan art. Yeah. I love fan art. You know, I'm a fan of it. Why wouldn't I want to kind of use it as a inspiration for my own well, stuff? We were kids doing yeah. that, and you know, like I said, we're still doing it. Yeah, yeah. I still do fan art, even though I work. Like I say, there's t-shirts, for instance. That's the most recent thing. It's all official, it's all Star Wars, but I still spend my evening drawing Boba Fett <laughs> or, a storm <laughs> or a Stormtrooper and post it on Instagram, even if I've been not asked to, just because I love it. You know? Or a comic book, I've recently just been picking up the pens and pencils up again and started doing a bit more comic art, because I love it. You know, There was a time when I was doing a lot more of it and then, and then commercial illustration took over and graphic design and branding or whatever it is I, I was getting paid for at the time but it's always there you know I want to do my own comic books and my own characters and my own IP and all that it's just that's my downtime stuff yeah. unfortunately it doesn't pay the bills but I'll still post it you know if I do a picture of Spider-Man I'll still post it even if I've not been asked to because I'm a fan I love that stuff so I think and those brands realize that as well so there's always someone looking, there's always someone seeing, and then someone will always pick up on that stuff. A lot of those jobs you just talked about are through some agencies. Um, 
great agencies who I'm lucky enough to be part of, like Debut and Post Poster Pussy and things like that. But some of those jobs I've got are through literally me posting a bit of fan art and someone getting in touch and going, you know, oh, I saw this. So it's definitely worth doing the passion projects. No, I, I, because I, I, like I say, I've been lucky enough, but there are, it's like a roller coaster. It's up and down. It's never t totally up. And there are moments sometimes where I think, oh, and it, oh, I don't, it's always fine for it. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, one the month before I was, I was working on this, and then the next month it just goes quiet, and you're not getting asked by those same people to, to do that work, and you think, oh, what have I done something wrong or? Uh, what have I done? Is is it not right for you or the right thing? But I think, I think you've just got to really. I don't know. It's it's it's. Uh, God, it's almost like playing chicken with yourself in the world. It's just a little bit. You just got to keep going, keep going, keep going, because it will happen. Um, especially, I've got, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by very talented friends, including you, Prit. Um, and I see what you do. Um, you are like. You're like an OG, original, original grafter, not a bit of an original gangster, but an, an OG, original grafter. Uh, you do graft big time and you're an amazing artist and photographer and filmmaker. And it is, it annoys me that you don't get the break you deserve. And I think you've been told that several times by lots of people. <laughs> Probably told All the time, yeah. It's, it's great, like, you know, when I... When I meet people here from Arthur, because we went to school together, and you see people in town, they're like, but we won't follow what you're doing. Yeah. And then the people be like, you know what, I'm, I'm really, they're rooting for me, they're constantly, mm. I'm really, you know, if anything, I just really wish that it would happen. And I keep, and, and someone will point it out and say, I, I don't know how many times or when it's going to happen. It's like every time you get that close, boom, something like. Yeah. I know what is that. No, nah, it's hard to put into words as well, mate. It really is. I have no idea, because I think, I think, like I said, I've experienced it myself. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, it's difficult. There's no real answer to it. It's just, I know the world just keeps turning. You just got to keep trying. I yeah. think it's. Well, all you've look, you've seen how it is here and what I've built. Yeah, I've built. it's amazing. It's not something that I don't think me and you're ever gonna stop. No. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we are, mate. I don't think we'll ever stop. No, totally. I don't, I, it's not in us. I think we're going mad if we stopped. Yeah. Even if we're like the most successful people in the world, I'd still be doing it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Even if I had all the money in the world, because I, <laughs> I so don't. Um, but, or, and all the success, because I so don't. And even if I had all that, I still would be doing what I do anyway, because I think that's us, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think we just... I think there's a lot of people like that, true creatives. Um, I know I'm not the best at the best, I'm, I know that, but I, I'm at that age as well though where I'm comfortable and I can deal with that. I'm I just think. happy with what I'm doing when I do it, and it's even better when I get paid for it, yeah. but I'd be doing it anyway. <sighs> before we even turned on the camera, me and you were looking at other people's art, right, and we're looking at other artists and stuff, and people that, you, you know, like, some of the artists you introduced and me to mm. people that you've had, you know, real life experiences early on in their, you know, their their journey, and you see that their evolution is yeah, we're yeah. Not sitting there hating about it. We look at it and go, oh no, no, this totally. Is inspiration, yeah, yeah. Like okay, and so you know we're of that vein. Yeah. I think with me sometimes if I if I if I go into that phase where I'm in that bubble of ah oh, blah blah blah, I'm so so this is shit blah blah blah. blah. It's because you can see that that something you can see it. You know, it's quite transparent. That, uh, there's not much effort got into this. You know, there's this is a little bit transparent. Mm, you know what I mean? mm. The experience and the journey maybe this artist has gone on. Mm. And I look at things and I think, well, there's artists that we're looking at today that you're showing me. We, we, we're like, oh, we're, we're motivated by mm. people doing very well, or we're seeing something called style or development or something. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's what we're we're into, you know, yeah. encouraging each other, yeah. pushing each other. Yeah. About what we, you know, what we see, and where we can go, and where we. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nice. It's nice seeing that the same same people. I think, I think you get. I think it's nice to be nice. I can't believe I use that word. Uh, it's, it, it is nice to be inspired by 
uh, people kind of cut from the same cloth, I suppose, as well. And you kind of have respect, don't you? When you see that, you kind of realise, especially those people you hear about who come from not an awful lot um, and, and, and done something and made something just through pure pushing and passion. Um, but yeah, I think we're very similar in that respect. I do think it'll happen, mate. Um, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I do, yeah. It's just one of those... Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, yeah. It, but what is that thing? I don't know. It's so hard to put to words, isn't it? But, yeah, it's a tough... I do... I do. It is, it is a tough one. It is a tough one to swallow, but I do think it is true that when people do say, work hard and it'll pay off, but and then you see some stupid influencer or <laughs> someone on Instagram who's not working off and it not working and as hard as we do yeah. and it pays off and that can be a bit frustrating but that's just that's a different thing altogether and that's the way totally, of the world totally different, and that's that's not shelf life either you know but those people are flashing a pen oh, totally you can't you help can't. get annoyed by that yeah. um, but you know you can't help being annoyed that's by what it. Saying to people really uh, this is with the Folio Society which um, they're a publisher of uh, fine reading material uh, but they really are they they are amazing they're very well established so when they approached me um, I I was so so chuffed um, to tell you the truth I'd done a book before with the Folio Society um, for the Jack Reacher you know the character Lee Charles is, uh, is Lee Charles yeah Lee Charles Jack Reacher, um, and that took a good six months to do. I'm trying to remember my timelines of these. With the, uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you why I'm getting muddled with the timelines because this this book here, the, the never never mind, was my lockdown project. Okay, can you so, just hold it up a little bit? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So I actually did a book before this of Jack Reacher, which is a very famous kind of fictional character uh, by Lee Childs. Unfortunately, that one did not go to print because they released a, a Jack Reacher book beforehand and the numbers weren't that good. So they decided to shelf it. So it sat on the shelf in the Fellow Society. Um, and I thought that was it. I thought, ah, oh, Fellow Society, I've had my chance. It's not happening. Oh, well, at least I've got the chance to kind of still work for them in some kind of way. Um, and then when the pandemic kind of hit us, uh, shit scared like everybody else when it came to work. Um, it's like work. Well, I was very lucky actually. When I say work dried up, it did not dry up. Uh, if anything, the pandemic it was one of the busiest times um, for me because I was doing a lot of editorial. So everyone just wanted to know about news and what was going on. So there was, uh, and com people can't uh, news companies couldn't publishers couldn't go out. And, and journalists couldn't go out because of the pandemic and they couldn't go out and the photographers couldn't go out and do shoots so I was getting a lot of editorial work so I was busy with that and then the Folio Society got in touch with me and said uh, we're going to put your work forward uh, to Neil Gaiman uh, who I've been personally for me a massive fan for a long time I would collected his Sandman books back in the day I have them all on my shelf uh, and American Gods um, and I just love gaming anyway. Um, so when, <laughs> when they said uh, we're going to put your name forward for the, we're going to do the Neverwhere release, I was just like over the moon. I couldn't believe it. So I got, I, I, I put forward my best work and samples, and just fingers crossed, hope I'll get it. Um, didn't hear anything for a few weeks. Um, busy with the editorial work, and then uh, Sherry, who's the creative director at um, Fellow Society got in touch and said, Neil really likes your work. First off, to hear that Neil liked my work, yeah. I'd have been happy enough with that. <laughs> it's just the fact Neil gave and saw my work and liked it. I was just buzzing. And they said, yeah, you've got the job. So while well, the, the first lockdown, um, I, was get, I got the chance to illustrate this, the Neverwhere book. Um, I got the chance to do the cover which is the slip cover, um, which has these beautiful flecks of gold, like mirror gold in the cover. So it looks like reflection. I'm not sure you can see that in the light, but 
in each window in a scene from London. Because the book, the story's about another London, what exists under our London. But it's all just that little bit different. Uh, well, I say a little bit, a lot different. Um, it's a fantasy kind of driven novel, so it's a fantasy driven, sort of like London, you know. Um, so I created this London cityscape with our main character door there on the on the front, kind of falling through the cityscape. Uh, but yeah, they put these lovely kind of like gold reflections in the windows. So there's a slip case. And then I had to do the cover to the book. Uh, this is our other main character, Richard. Um, and he's falling the other way through the, through the city. Um, and then, there you go. I got the chance to do, I think it's seven color plates throughout the book of illustration and also like an opener. So I like the opener there, the city, and then a big kind of double page spread there. Um, and then the rest of the pages are introducing characters from the story, which are all based on famous landmarks in London. So you've got Old Bailey, uh, the Friars, uh, Big Ben, <laughs> Knightsbridge, you know, all these named places in London, but they're actually characters in, in the story. So for instance, just bear with me a sec, I can see one here. Oh, yeah. So this guy here is a character in a book called, called Old Bailey. You know, we all know Old Bailey, the place in the... Oh, sorry, my voice is going croaky. Um, we know old Old Bailey in London, but he's an actual character in the book. He uh, wears a cloak of feathers and surrounded by crows and magpies and keeps starlings in cages and a bit of a rag and bone man, basically. Um, so, yeah, I was given all these characters uh, and I illustrated them. Uh, and some are, some are in scenes which are described in the story. Um, I'll show you another one. Let's have a look here. Uh, there's a, she's one of the characters. She's not actually a landmark name character, but uh, that's Hunter. She's one of the main characters in the story. She's, um, she's like a African warrior kind of character. Uh, that's a scene in the underground where the the tube comes alive the darkness in the tube comes alive mind the gap the whole area the whole section is called so use your imagination there but yeah it's a it's a it's an amazing story and just a chance to illustrate these characters and story there's a, another scene that's the angel of islington so we all know you know islington angel is an actual character in the book so there's a scene there where they're having a drink and something to eat in the angel's chambers uh, this was a nice scene to illustrate. That's on the HM Belfast, and that's the market. It's the floating market. It just appears throughout London in different spots. So I just got the chance there to create a whole scene. Um, vibrant, colourful scene with lots of colourful characters. Um, so, yeah, to get this job was absolutely amazing. So I was given the colour plates to do and then an extra idea by, you know, suggested by me was to, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll show you that one quickly. That's Knightsbridge. Really happy with that one as well. It's a bridge that just disappears into the dark of the night. There we go. Yeah, I was really happy with that one. But yeah, I, I also suggested about creating all these smaller illust kind of spot illustrations for the book in the opening chapter, in the, the opening of the chapter. So for instance, like chapter three, there's a skull and kind of ornate kind of switchblade. But I did about 21 of these small illustrations, which also sit in the book. So it was a massive project. Anyway, yeah, it took took quite a while to do took me the whole lot down and then some into the next year um, and absolutely an amazing experience uh, the Folio Society and Neil were absolutely amazing people to work for and work with um, and they had so much creative freedom on the project so 
like Pritz said, it was just a dream job. I couldn't believe I got the chance to work on something like this. Anyway, it was um, it was done and printed up and put out there and went for was it last November? It went out. I think it's doing pretty well. Um, I've had so many lovely kind of like comments and great feedback. And the tweet Neil Gaiman himself put out as well and put on his socials about it, just to hear how absolutely in awe of its beauty and uh, the, the, the illustrations. It's just like, yeah, that, just a bucket list job, basically. Um, couldn't believe it. Absolutely everything I mean. So yeah, to have that out there in the real world, looking the way it does. Yeah, chuffed to bits. Fingers crossed there's more and more these to conquer. So. Uh, I hope so. That'd be nice. <laughs> but yeah. I know there's things that you can't talk about. <laughs> yeah, there are. There, there, I am working on another book actually at the moment. Um, not for the Folio Society, but it's a it's a nice one with another nice author. Um, but that's all I can say. And whether it comes out this year or next, I have no idea. But we'll see. But yeah, it's a, it's another it's another bucket list. Another favourite author and story I love. So. Big, big fan of hip-hop. Like I said, it's uh, one of the reasons why me and Pritt are such good friends. I, I love the music. Um, but I'm a massive fan of the Wu-Tang. That, that was my jam back back when I was really into it. Um, so to get a chance to produce this, you got that, was, a, again, another bucket list job for me personally. Um, yeah, to... to to do a Wu Tang a, a official Wu Tang poster. When I got the call from um, Collection uh, ZZ um, to do this poster, to to have the opportunity to do one of the posters for the, it was for the New York State of Mind tour with Nas and um, Wu Tang. Um, I was just, I got, yeah, I I just jumped at the chance. Um, and of course, you know you can't you can't can't go wrong with what you're going to do for the Wu Tang. It's of course it's going to be kind of like knee deep in kung fu and movie and samurai and, and uh, all that kind of culture. Um, and just the chat, I just knew what I wanted to do straight away. To be honest, um, I wanted to draw uh, just a fucking wicked looking samurai. But I've always had this idea of the Wu Tang. That's always the the logo is always reminding me of kind of like a samurai motif on the front of the helmet, you know, the kind of thing. So like I started with the head and the war mask. Um, and once I got that right, the rest, to be honest, just followed. I did a lot of research, a lot of photo referencing. I comped all his body up out of about, I think I must have used about 20 different photos of samurai um, and pasted it together, got it on the light board sketched it several times, changed it, messed it, made up some of those weapons. I don't even know if they exist, but they look they look like they do. <laughs> uh, they are based on like proper real kind of like Kung Fu weapons. And just, yeah, it really came that, like it was one of those jobs where it was natural, organic. I just flew with it. I just, just felt right when I was doing it. And I think that's why I love it so much, just because the idea was so strong in my head. Uh, and I just wanted to get as many Wu Tang kind of references in there as much as I could. It, like these garments, you know, they're embroidered with the Wu Tang poster, um, Wu Tang logo on this scarf at the front here. Uh, big chains, Wu Tang chains. So I kind of wanted to mix it up with a bit of street culture, but also, and, and the hip hop culture, and but also Kung Fu culture, you know, which is like there, which they're, they're embedded in. Um, so yeah, I sent off the sketches and they loved them, you know. So you know, like Rizzo's looking at this and the Wu Tang and giving it the, the the nod and the heads up and just that alone is just like blew me away to think they've got their eyes on it and um, they're really happy with it. So yeah, I just went to town on that one. It probably took a bit longer than I should have spent on it, but I'm really happy the result. Uh, again, it's that chance to work on something what's inspired you this music inspired me the amount of time that's just that's all i used to have that was my that was my kind of soundtrack back in the day while sitting in my bedroom drawing comic book characters um just listening to the you know the 36 chambers and just ah uh, yeah 
and again, if you were the 12, 12 year old me, uh, I'd be doing the Wu-Tang pose there. Um, I don't think I'd quite believe myself, but yeah, I got the opportunity and there it is.